Welcome back, as promised. Let's get chatting with the management of Inox Green. They've signed a term sheet to divest 100% stake in Nani Virani Wind Energy SPV. The management has said that this will help the company become net debt free. We do have Devan Jain, who's the executive director of the group, to join in and give us more details on the same. Devan, thank you for joining in. I remember a couple of months ago, you did say that this is uh, very much on the cards. And now that you've gone ahead and signed the term sheet, just wanted to understand, what is the money that you will be raising from this? Uh, what's the exact amount? And what does this then do to your overall net debt? Hi, good morning, Nigel. It's a pleasure to be back. Uh, so basically, we've signed a enabling term sheet to divest 100% Nani Virani, as we had maintained a few months ago, that our, our target for this financial year is to make INOG free, net debt free. And I'm happy to say we're on track for that. The asset value is close to about 290 to 300 odd crores, uh, adjusted for the uh, the numbers, which a few crores which may come in depending on when the actual consummation of the transaction takes place. Uh, in Inox Green, we had a net debt as of 31st March 2023 of 350 odd crores. So broadly, with this transaction, about 290 300 odd crores goes off the balance sheet, and from internal accruals which have happened uh, from uh, 1st of April this year and, and over the course of this year, uh, we should be a net debt-free company over this financial year. And how long makes before us a very, deal... very clean and your right. cash how... flow business. And how long before this deal gets consummated and the money comes to you? Look, I think it should, I think it should take about uh, three to four months because we need uh, connectivity transfer approvals, the banking approvals, as well as... Uh, ordinary regulatory approvals. Otherwise, frankly speaking, it should be a, I mean, it's a plug and play deal, but uh, mm. normal connectivity transfers and debt transfers, etc., typically take about two to three months. All right. Hi, Devansh. Uh, this is Nigel on this side. Uh, you know, the last year, your interest cost was roughly around 65 to around 70 crores approximately. So post getting uh, net debt free, will this interest cost that normally, you know, it's been fluctuating anything between 10 to 20 crores of the last many quarters that I've seen? So does this total interest cost come down to zilch? Oh, absolutely. At the Inox green level, it becomes zilch. I okay. mean, we may have one or two crores of other normal banking costs, but I'm sure the interest earnings on the free cash flow would be far more than uh, enough to take care of one to two crores of normal banking charges. Got it. All right. So debt-free, Inox uh, uh, green, and also the interest costs come down to zilch. We got that. Could you tell us who's the buyer of this particular asset, uh, the Nani Virani wind energy deal? Is it the promoter entity well, itself? It's a group. Well, it's a group C&I platform. We're setting up a very large C&I play. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, uh, we had a couple of other term sheets. But given that the Gujarat policy is now in the public domain and the group itself needs very, very large, uh, uh, has very, very significant power requirements. And a lot of people wanted to partner with us on uh, building out a new vertical. So we've... Uh, We've, uh, subject to shareholder approvals, decided to, uh, uh, at the best price, acquire it in one of the group CNI and i entities. So, just to clarify, so the promoter entity itself is buying this asset, right? It's a, it's a, it's a C&I platform which uh, has private equity investors as well as uh, the group investing in it. So, okay. uh, I mean, what is the basis of this 300 crore valuation? Just wanted to understand, I mean, because it is uh, bought by a related party, say, group itself... Is there a chance that there could have been higher realizations had it been sold to some other parties and not the group? Well, historically, as you may remember, we've sold four such SPVs, three to hmm. Adani and one to Torrent. I mean, uh, uh, yes. a couple of them to Adani and a couple of them to Torrent. And effectively, uh, this pricing uh, is uh, uh, on, on par or slightly better than some of those deals. In fact, we had a couple right. of deals. So we've matched. We've got other term sheets in, in, in place and we've matched all of that to ensure that there is absolute compliance with respect to regulatory requirements right. as well as related party compliance. Great. So uh, thanks for clarifying on that. You know, that was just a question that uh, came out of our curious minds. Just wanted to understand uh, going forward now that you become net debt free, what your CapEx outlook is. And at the same time, will you be uh, you know, giving dividends, any dividend policy for the company going forward? Look, from an INOX Green perspective, we very, very clearly said now with that, now that now the fact that it becomes a net debt free entity, it becomes a very long term uh, annuity business, a uh, free cash flow business. Uh, there are no capex requirements. Uh, I mean, yes, there will be acquisitions in this entity, which would be 
which would be done uh, very judicially, judiciously. It would use a little mix, a little uh, mix of cash as well as equity. Uh, uh, in spite, I mean, keeping that aside, we would still have significant free cash flows. And uh, uh, I mean, of course, we will be announcing a dividend policy as as part of our group. A lot of our other listed companies have had dividend policies in place and have continued to be paying dividends. But this would become an ESG play, and yes, this would have a dividend policy put out in in due course of time. You know, uh, Devan Shinda, the last few statements you said everything that the market wants to hear: ESG play, dividend <laughs> policy, music to the ears of investors. But you're saying you're also looking at inorganic growth. What could the potential size be in terms of inorganic growth? Look, what we've stated very clearly in the public domain, uh, we've said that we want to make this a six gigawatt platform in the next three financial years. I think, given the massive growth we're seeing on the wind side, the macroeconomic side, uh, we are fairly confident that we should be able to achieve that target uh, in, 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 in the timelines we've promised, possibly even earlier than that. So that would really be doubling of this company over the next three financial years. All right. Um, you know, before we speak about uh, some further uh, things about the business structure, which is flashing on the screen for you right now, I wanted to understand you currently have around 3150 megawatts. You have a target of taking it to 6000 megawatts by FY26. That implies a 25-26% sort of growth going forward. Will that be reflected in your EBITDA as well? If you could give us a sense of what you end this year on an EBITDA level and say the next couple of years, what's uh, the EBITDA prognosis? No, certainly. I think the EBITDA will uh, be moving in, in tandem with the growth that the business sees. Having said that, obviously, there could be a slightly higher EBITDA growth uh, than the business growth itself, given that there'll be further economies of scale kicking in. There are certain value-added services which we're looking to add to the portfolio, uh, revenue share agreements which will kick in from the next financial year. But certainly, compared to the last financial year, uh, this financial year should see a very significant jump. So, let, let's, let's, if you could put some numbers, you know, Devansh, absolute EBITDA in FY24, FY25, FY26. Just three numbers. Look, look, I can't give out forward-looking statements, but at March 23, we had a, from a pure operational perspective, our EBITDA was about 103 crores. And I think in this financial year, our EBITDA should be uh, far significant, I mean, uh, far more than a 25% CAGR. And I think that will, uh, you know, it should be, you know, it should, uh, I mean, I, unfortunately, I can't give forward-looking statements, but clearly, uh, way ahead of the 25% CAGR growth that the top line should see over the next three financial years. Final question, uh, you know, Inox Wind Energy is a holding company of Inox Wind. And, uh, you know, we, we were talking about the entire structure getting collapsed. You have told this out, so this is something that you can definitely talk about. By when does it happen? Look, I think uh, it's already in the public domain. The scheme has already been approved by the shareholders. Uh, mm -hmm. we've, uh, we're, 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 we've got all the banking approvals in place now. Uh, we are awaiting uh, NSCBSC approvals, which, should, which are expected in the near future. Once we get that, the scheme, as I mentioned, is in the public domain. We'll file that with NCLT. And then from what I understand from the mm -hmm. bankers and the lawyers, it should be a you know, four to six months process. Uh, I don't see any uh, rocket science in this, given we've got uh, no creditors in IWEL and we've got all our banking approvals. So it's more an administrative job. But I would ah. expect that within this financial year, we should be done with that. It's been good speaking to you, Devansh. Thanks so much for speaking to us here on CNBC TV 18. As things progress, we'll be looking forward to chatting up with you more often because it seems you're at the right sector, right, right time as well. Now just delivery is something that the street will be looking forward to very, very closely. Thank <laughs> you.